Hi everyone, welcome to Tech Talk, a show where Amit and I talk about various technology related topics. Uh, this week we're going to talk about a topic which is titled biotech. Biotech is a very interesting subject but often overlooked, in my experience at least. Uh, we often underestimate how powerful biotech is. Uh, when technology is combined with anything biological, that's, well, from, from the name, we can kind of figure out that's what biotech is. But when, when we think about biology, we think very, um, well, I don't know what you guys think, but I don't think about the vast array of all the things that are available within biology. It's not just farming it's medicine and it's you know starting from genetics to even farming is quite powerful because that may, may you know uh, that makes available all the food that we eat so yeah i think biotech is a very powerful topic and it's important for us to be aware of all the different um, facets of biotech that are making our lives as easy as it is today so that's why we thought it would be a good idea for our audience to uh, to sort of listen to biotech as a topic and uh, for us to share some some of the information that we know. Uh, thank you very much, Amit, for coming up with this topic. And uh, as as I understand, I mean, I've always had a narrow view on biotech, but I think you've done some research and some. Uh, knowledge on this topic. So le let's start with the topic. What What's your thought on biotech? So uh, thanks, Rana, for that introduction. Yeah, I think bio biotech is quite important, especially in today's world. Uh, we are rapidly progressing. We just had COVID. We are still recovering from it. We saw the power of mRNA vaccines that was rolled out effectively across the world. And uh, those vaccines helped uh, recover a lot of people and saving lives. So biotech has a very important role. And um, I thought that it's a very important topic because uh, we talk about technology, but how does technology affect our lives, uh, our, our biological lives? And how is it changing um, on a uh, on a on a day to day basis? So that's why I picked up the topic. And uh, when we talk about biotech, it's actually a, lo a lot of things. It's it's a very broad topic and uh, we'll try to cover different aspects of it uh, there is bioengineering there is bioinformatics uh, there is genetic engineering etc etc so uh, biotech has all of that so it's biology plus technology and uh, we'll look at some of the uh, aspects of biotechnology and it's not just uh, technology related to biology related to human beings but biology related to plants biology related to animals so the three things together and then biology to uh, prevent uh, diseases and then medicines so there are a lot of all these things that uh, encompass the biotech uh, field yes yes very much so and uh, thank you for giving us some some insight on how many different um areas biotech uh, is sort of spread across and one of the things i always thought is whenever a discipline has a lot of um, conjunction or, or relation with other discipline and you need interdisciplinary knowledge to to do something with it that usually is a like a breeding ground for disruptive disruptive new technologies where you know it, it kind of changes everything and i feel like biotech is one of those um areas where there is a lot of where you need a lot of interdisciplinary knowledge for example even if you want to do something if, even in farming right and you know you, you want to come up with a like a really modern way of farming maybe in in, in a domestic environment uh, you have like I've, I've seen some of these things where it's like a column where you know you have like various vegetables are growing in a home environment and it's it's all automated and you, you just do like a, something every day or no it, you don't even have to do it every day you just put the things that are needed over a period of time and it automated uh, it, it supplies that and you get fresh uh, produce for your meals every day and for these to make something like that you need mechanical engineering knowledge you need farming knowledge you know plant you know, and that kind of knowledge 
and you need automation so it and uh, sort of programming knowledge which would automate this whole thing so yeah whenever there is interdisciplinary knowledge and there is a lot in biotech for example as you mentioned covid vaccine you know it's not just about um coming you know discovering what the vaccine you know the main structure of the design would be that's obviously the most important part but for that you also have to think about the logistics you know some of those vaccine needs a particular temperature to be to to preserve and then you know the the manufact mass produce production of those vaccines are another another discipline altogether so all of these things all of these knowledges when when it comes together then it becomes quite a powerful technology as as an output and in biotech you need different interdisciplinary knowledge i i think even more to make things happen and that is that kind of takes us forward quite a bit quite a few steps when when we come up with something yes definitely and you give given a good example when you said there are columns and you're farming and you can do it in your home it's basically vertical farming and uh, how do you do that there is something called as uh, i think uh, hydro hydroponics where you actually don't need soil to grow plants you just use water and you add all the nutrients in the water and you give artificial light so that's how they grow a lot of food in netherlands where uh they have a lot of water they don't have a lot of uh land to cultivate so they are uh, a lot into hydroponics they are also into greenhouses so yeah i mean but uh when we talk about biotechnology when we talk about say say let's let's start with farming and uh, crops or plants so when we talk about biotech what where are we looking at to uh, where is the biotech part in farming so one is to make the crops more uh, pest resistance so you will modify the seeds genetically modify the seeds so they are more pest resistance the other thing is you want to increase the yield so you want to increase the yield of say a rice or a paddy or a sugarcane crop wheat corn etc so you want to increase the yield of that particular crop the third thing could be that um, uh i mean you you talked about pest and you talked about yield the third thing could be that you just uh, uh remove the seed so there are now a lot of plants which are coming with seedless types so you don't have to have i mean you need seeds to produce them but those plants will not produce seeds so suppose you go to a um, tesco today is tesco or sainsbury which is a uk grocery stores you can buy oranges without the seeds you can buy uh, some grapes without seeds so they are genetically modified so they are uh, creating a new type of crop using biotech by modifying the seed to give you a product that is more easily consumable so that's the impact of say a part of biotech in uh, farming of plants absolutely and i love this seedless fruits i mean that has changed the game for me altogether i mean i didn't used to like oranges before until i came across the seedless oranges and now i am waiting for seedless watermelons i mean they are more um, mostly seedless but i think there's there's, there's still <laughs> a few left usually but yeah I, i am waiting for it to be fully seedless for as a consumer i would really prefer that yes so i mean i mean uh, th- those are the areas in in just plants and if you look at animals it's the same thing so a lot of animals are um, uh, used for animal produce so like wool like eggs like uh, meat cloth etc and then uh, food and they are used for food as well so you want animals to be more resistant to diseases so you give them a lot of uh, uh, enzymes and immunotherapy drugs etc then you want them to have a lot of meat if you are killing them for meat then you have to ensure that they produce a lot of meat so then you try to modify the uh, the eggs of the animals and then you genetically modify so that's again part of biotech where we are trying to uh, have more meat and less of maybe brains and or healthier, whatever healthier meat as well so there is healthier healthier exactly yeah yeah fiber. exactly so and and then if you have cows then you are thinking about milk so then you want uh, cows to produce milk frequently and they the cows to give more milk 
and the cow's milk should be more um, um, what do you say free from diseases etc so you want all of that plus you want maybe cows to drink eat less food and still give more output so you are engineering a lot of things and that's where some of the part of say in the, in the animal side you are getting the biotech part so the technology is now uh, telling uh, so so see when when do cows produce milk when they are trying to produce babies and how do you simulate that behavior all year, all year round so you have to use some kind of technology to make sure that the cows are producing milk uh, every every day or uh, every month without stopping uh, so so there are a lot of technology going behind that and then it's also the uh, technology to make sure that the meat that you get is high quality and uh, disease resistant so it should not catch any diseases through the process of uh, the meat farming or meat production so you want to make sure all of that so these are very tricky and and when we talk about these genetically modified and other things we are also looking at medicines so medicines is basically influenced by these so you have a feedback so i i try a medicine in in my lab and then i try it on an animal and then i see the behavior and then based on the feedback from that animal i modify the uh, medicine again which i again give to the animal so there is a feedback loop and that loop keeps going 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 till you actually uh, deliver a good quality medicine that gives you a lot of output uh, the animals are healthy and uh, they are uh, no longer sick and they produce uh, good quality meat and uh, milk or eggs uh etc so so there is uh, so there is a pharmaceutical industry involved as well which is part again of the biotech where where you say pharma tech pharmaceuticals so vaccines is part of the pharmaceutical industry and uh, the, the, there are other other medicines there are that are there there are quite a few fields about the like there's med tech as well which med tech we yeah about another time to, you know to do with medicines and then pharma tech so yeah the 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 doctors who only deal with one kind of animal <laughs> humans are are in med tech whereas in biotech uh, you know you deal with all different everything. kinds of animals exactly <laughs> yeah 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 uh, so i mean medicine is a subset of uh, so med tech is a subset of biotech because there is biology involved and yes. then you add technology and uh, when we think about technology we are not just thinking about computers technology is something that makes our life easier that takes the human civilization a bit forward using it um so that's technology a uh, wheels are a technology fire is a technology it's not to be, technology should not be confused with that okay uh, computers are technology smartphones are technology but uh, wheel is not car is not etc so the key is in 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 the name it so anything to do with computer is information technology so to, the technology yes. is particular to you know giving and taking of information yes. that you can yes. say that um, it but there is a lot of other technology which is uh, you know, some of the things we are talking about today and and then in in biotech i mean the the, uh, the pinnacle of biotech is revolving around humans how do you make humans more healthy so the, there are a lot of things in biotech one of the things that is coming out is smart variables so you know these uh, variables that uh, track your heart rate they track the number of steps they track your blood oxygen levels etc so it is i mean you cannot say that it is not biotech because somehow or the other it is uh, taking certain biological markers measuring it and then giving it a, as an output on your smartphone or a smart watch or maybe a smart a weighing scale a smart blood pressure monitor etc so these are all smart devices where the information is being collected and then it's put it in a database and then you can see the progress over a period of time and then you can see whether you're improving your health or whether your health is uh, reducing so this is one way in which you are having a measurement of your biomarkers then there is another way where um, you have these uh, machines that are small uh, technology or technological pieces or artifacts that are implanted in your body to measure certain again thing so say glucose so glucose monitor so you have implants in your say arm uh, and then it monitors your blood uh, glucose level and then it shows it in the app so you don't have to measure it again and again i mean of course you do have to measure it but uh, instead of putting a needle 
to take out the blood and then measuring the glucose, you can just put the uh, phone near you and then it can send the signal uh, and it can tell your smartphone that, okay, this is the measure, it's going up, so you need to take some insulin. So that is another way. And there are many other implants where people are uh, uh, putting it in their bodies so that uh, they do, so like an NFC product. So I have the NFC product in my hands. So every time I don't have to carry my smartphone, I can just uh, tap my hand and uh, voila, the payment is done. So, I mean, I mean, there are various levels and these are some of the levels that, uh, I mean, I just wanted to highlight for now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there are so many ways um, biotech is making our lives better. And some of them are so uh, sort of disrupting that we are even scared, uh, you know, to adopt uh, as a mass adoption. Like, for example, what you said, a, a computer chip in, inside your body. And, you know, a lot of people are, and including myself, are worried about the privacy and what it can do, etc. And we are particularly scared when it, in anything is to do with directly to our body and health. But it is possible and you know I, I i think in norway or netherlands there are you know uh, there have been like quite a quite a few pilot programs that has done it already and their lives are so much better obviously you know I, I think you know however much you want you don't agree with the terms and conditions and uncheck the optional boxes whenever you're registering for something they are going to collect some data one way or another but um yeah, I mean, the, the way it also has the potential to make your life so much better is also something to think about whether you want to do that give and take because it is, it is amazing technology. I mean, I'm scared myself, so I'm not going to urge you guys to, to go for it. But, um, you know, if the opportunity presents itself, I would probably be cautious and do my research and probably, as long as I know whether it's reversible, <laughs> I probably would want to try it myself. So yeah, there are there are many benefits, and you know, if you think of, think a little bit innovative, innovatively, then you could think of many ways you could you could utilize these kind of technology. When the technology is intertwined with biology, it can be there can be so many things, and you know, you can easily go on science fiction level things. Like for example, if you had a computer. Um, built, you know, like attached to your brain, and or the internet, all of internet. Neuralink. Neuralink yes. is this that. Yeah, so Elon Musk is working that. on Neuralink. Doing exactly that. Yeah, I was going to mention exactly that. The, you know that. How imagine how powerful it can be. I mean, you, you would single-handedly get rid of any need for any exams ever because you don't need exams. You just you just need, you know, need to train your brain to be creative rather than trying to memorize various processes that we currently do you know wh what we what do we learn in schools and universities either method of doing something or information if you have all of these in your brain straight away all you need to be confident about is that what you can do with that information or what you can do with that method and then you know you can you can have productive output in the society because the information is there already available in your brain instantly um, as long as you can utilize those information and those methods and steps to make something uh, or to put some sort of output then you know you, you, that's all you need really so that's just one aspect of things but there could be so many other things that you know could enhance on a science fiction level just by yeah, 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 there Definitely is. Uh, if, if you look at Neuralink, uh, Elon Musk, I recently he gave a TED talk and he mentioned that Neuralink is basically uh, in the first gen, it's going to help uh, people who are paralyzed. So it's going to be a game changer for people who are paralyzed and it'll help them maybe feel something, maybe move their body parts, etc. So that's going to be the first step. The second step, maybe something else. And I think the final step would be communication. So you just think and then you're communicating. So you don't even have to talk. So you're just communicating with uh, people telepathically. Yeah, and you know that's obviously still in a proof of concept stage. But then there's yes. another science fiction level technology which has been here for a few years now, the CRISPR technology, where you can actually yes. modify genes. Gene editing, yes. To 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 make go you know make 
un, un, unwanted things go away? Well, I mean, obviously, it's not. It's not as far as I know. I don't. I haven't researched it recently. But as far as I know, you can't do it on a baby just yet. But you could kind of, you know, theoretically, you could decide whether they would be talented geniuses, what would be their eye color, what would be their height, as well as, you know, any negative traits like allergies and stuff you want to get rid of. You can potentially do all of these things in lab right now, but, you know, potentially in future. Yes. I mean, and that poses a lot of ethical questions as well. I'm sure the audience are thinking about it right now, that whether you would want to do it or you would want to have your natural baby the, the, the way... God so, so science fiction is a very great uh, uh, view uh, to tell people about the implications of a certain technology. So this is a very uh, good film, uh, Gattaca, G-A-T-T-A-C-A, -T -T -A -A, Gattaca. Uh, it stars uh, Ethan Hawke and Uma Thurman and Jude Law. And it's a Hollywood film and it's based on the same thing, gene editing. So basically you uh, create uh, babies and you decide that you want a baby that's exceptionally healthy and exceptionally intelligent and exceptionally good looking. So healthy, good looking and intelligent. What more do you want? And uh, they have the highest uh, chances of, uh, uh, I mean, living as long as possible, etc. So now you have a baby who's this and then you have a baby who are naturally born. There is no editing and they have birth defects and they have learning disabilities they're not that good looking and now if you live in a world where you have these superior genetically modified human beings and you have inferior natural human beings how would a society look like because if everyone is intelligent if everyone is good looking what would a society look like so that's the question that the film is trying to answer and uh, it's trying to understand the motivations behind um, these technologies very interesting That's, film and uh, very um, thought provoking. Absolutely, yeah, I I would definitely want to check it out. Um, I didn't know about this, but yeah, I mean, the thing is, whenever a technology, in in my view, and this is this is a shortcut, what I think of whenever a technology kind of questions the privacy, security, or the ethical questions that is a technology that is going to disrupt the world in one way or another. For example, Uber, when it came, um, it, it, it questioned the, you know, in a lot of ways, it questioned uh, privacy and security. Not necessarily, I, I don't think there was an ethical question in there. Well, there was ethical question because it was getting the usual taxi drivers out of business. Uh, but I'm just saying, it, it's just... And, and bear in mind, uh, they are gig workers. They were not, a, I mean, recently the law has been passed that they're employees, but mm -hmm. when Uber was launched, it was gig workers. So it was not ethical because people mm -hmm. are using the app to book, uh, to get customers uh, on their cabs, but they're not treated as employees. And Uber is taking a cut for every uh, ride, which is uh, not cool. Yeah, yeah, not cool. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, this is my hack. Whenever I'm looking at like startups and trying to understand whether this startup is going to disrupt the market in the future or, you know, change something, I, I see that whether they have the potential to make an ethical question, you know, whether it can be questioned, you know, the implications of what they're doing. Is there an ethical question or privacy or security? These three things, if there is that, um, you know, I, I think they're going to disrupt the market and, you know, there, there, is a, there is a place where, you know, you probably potentially want to invest or not. Um, but uh, yeah, and in biotech, I feel like there's so many places where you can question that. And, you know, and, and I feel like it's, it's one of the less explored areas of technology. And you oh, know, definitely, I mean, I mean, not less explored because there are a lot of different areas now people are exploring. And uh, so we just talked about, say, Neuralink. So Neuralink is something that's implanted in your head just under your, I think they take a part of your skeleton out and they just implant the chip. Of course, there are tests going on. But uh, that's uh, the, the proof of concepts and the prototypes are now being made and uh, researched on. Then we talked about genetically modified. So we talked about genetically modified uh, plants, animals. What about human beings? So that's gene editing. It's not happening at the level of babies, but uh, you can now edit certain parts of your uh, uh, 
some cert certain genetic defects that you have. So suppose you are uh, susceptible to cancer or susceptible to some diseases that uh, runs that are hereditary. So maybe you can try to get rid of it. Of course, it's a very it's a very early stages, but it's uh, being experimented on. So that's gene editing. CRISPR is the technology. We'll mention some links about that. Then we talked about medicines or pharmaceuticals. I think that plays a huge role because in the end, uh, we are alive because thanks to the uh, technology of medicines, because medicines have clearly, uh, I mean, increased our lifespans, reduced the number of diseases and made us more healthy and stronger and intelligent, etc. And it's taking care of many other things. Uh, so medicines are uh, very good and of course there is a lot of technology behind researching these medicines, behind researching the molecules, the chemical formulas, etc. to make a new medicine. So there is in, in, in pharmacy, in pharmaceutical industry, the biotech part is is a is a huge thing, but there is a chemistry involved because of the chemical formulas that are there in the medicines. So so that's uh, the pharmaceutical side. Then you have the um, what do you say? Uh, I mean, we talked about biomarkers, but there are diagnostic tools uh, where and then there is in the operation theater there are many other tools. We are, we are using 3D printers to manufacture certain parts of our body to be replaced inside rather than putting metals. So suppose you can use a chemical or an enzyme or whatever that is biologically suited to your blood type and your uh, DNA, then you can print it and then you can put it in your body so that it doesn't attack. Because imagine uh, you put a metal rod or something that's uh, not biodegradable over a period of time, it can cause some other issues. So imagine if, uh, suppose they can just look at your DNA and the blood type and they can install something in your body that, uh, that works for you, then it's great. And that's the problem with implants. So we, we know that uh, implants are very good because a lot of people, they have organ failures, they are born with uh, genetic defects where their hearts are not working, the lungs are not working, liver is not working, etc. Kidneys are, kidneys fail, etc. So in those cases, they need a transplant. But the problem with a transplant is it belongs to someone else. And when something else, which is foreign to your body is, is implanted in yourself, then what happens is your body starts attacking it. So then you need to take immunosuppressant drugs to ensure that your body, when it attacks, it doesn't, I mean, kill the organ that's implanted. What if we could create an organ from your blood type, from your DNA, and then implant it? Then your body will not reject it because it's your DNA. It's your blood type. And that's what scientists are working on. And there is this uh, thing called stem cells. So uh, stem cells are basically cells that can be uh, made into any cell. They can be a heart cell, they can be a kidney cell, they can become a liver cell, they can be, become a lung cell, they can become a brain cell. So stem cells are cells that can become anything. And they are only found in babies. As adults, we don't have stem cells. So when babies are born, they are born with one type of cells, stem cells, and those cells become different organs. And as they grow, those organs develop. And over a period of time, we get rid of all the stem cells. So we want to understand from a biological point of view, why those stem cells are there in the first place and why they, why we don't have it in the future. So that maybe in the future, you can grow your own limb. So suppose you lose a limb, like your arm or your leg uh, in, in some accident, uh, and uh, they have to amputate. Now, why can't we regrow? So there are animals in the wild that can actually regrow their tails, they can regrow their limbs. So why can't we do that? What's stopping our bodies to do that? So there is, uh, there is a, a kind of research that's already ongoing to help people, especially war victims uh, and uh, war veterans that have gone through a lot of trauma, that have had a lot of injuries. So if we can uh, help them uh, recover, uh, say with their uh, with stem cells that it's a, it's a breakthrough technology so there's i mean you might hear about stem cells quite a lot and uh, yeah it's a, it's a very interesting piece of technology that's uh, going to revolutionize once we crack it and we will crack it right yeah no this is actually really interesting to know i actually didn't know all of these uh, things about stem cells and uh, 
that's actually quite cool that's uh that's I'm why sure. they're called the stem cells and uh so uh it is it has ethical ethical aspects as well so if you want to do research then you need stem cells from embryos not even babies embryos so so of course there is an ethical bit involved how many pregnant ladies would want uh, their uh, cells from their embryos to be researched and taken so those aspects are there so that's why there is very this, the progress has been very slow but if we are able to make progress then it's it's going to be a game changer yeah i absolutely agree I mean, that's uh, I, uh, that is actually quite quite a science fiction -y kind of uh, yes because uh, imagine i mean like, when, uh, when babies are babies are conceived they don't have any type of cells right they don't yeah. have heart they don't have lungs and something in their body is being made into that and those are nothing but stem cells so and it's, that's it's a very... like you know and if you make it as a while you're adult um this is like an organ that's made tailor-made for you exactly really it's personalized personalized uh what do you say healthcare mm -hmm. that's also an, another thing that's happening in the healthcare industry or uh, i mean i would not say biotech it's healthcare more where the the care that's given to you is very personalized because imagine uh, when you go to a pharma uh, pharmacy they give you a medicine and they prescribe a dose but those dose are different for different people it's different for men it's different for women it's different for children and then it's different for ethnicity so a black person a white person an asian person etc they have different uh, uh, genetic traits so the medicines have to be tested so clinical trials are now uh, trying to have more diverse groups because it's found that the dosage that they prescribe earlier was uh, not uh, not working for all the different types of individuals you needed different dosage for different types of people so the more diverse group you have during the clinical trials the more better medicines you can make for a broader population than a very specific population right okay these are these are all you know new information to me and it's it's really good to know i mean you know it, it's good to have this knowledge and hopefully uh the audience is also as intrigued as i am getting to know all of these things yeah i mean i i had uh, kind of limited knowledge on this thank you amit for <laughs> enlightening me and the audience for for for, for yeah things. and yeah. then you also have a uh, biomechanics so so you have seen these olympics like pa paralympics and other things where the people are handicapped and they have um they have a leg or they have an arm or they have something attached to their bodies uh it is to enhance their uh mechanics or their movements so if they have lost a leg what if we can attach a uh by a, a mechanical leg which will help them to walk stand erect and uh, not be in a wheelchair wheelchair all the time uh and what if you had different legs for running walking waterproof etc etc so those those are the different things and plus if you are paralyzed so now there are suits biomechanical suits where uh, if you are paralyzed you might have seen it in movies um, i mean terminate is not the right example but uh, i would say a mecha bot uh, there was a movie that was made a uh, mechanized robot so you basically sit inside the robot i think something like avatar uh, so you sit inside the robot and uh, you uh have a lot of uh weapons and you can you can walk run fast etc and now imagine you scale it down but it just suits your body so it it wraps around you and then you can stand up so you give a signal from your brain and the the suit it stands up it supports your weight and then you start, try to give a signal to start walking so that's another thing that's happening and and this is just mechanics part there are people who are looking at how to uh, uh, bring back eyesight so our eyes are basically nothing but lenses and they are sending a signal to the brain to say that okay this is what you're seeing and uh, this is the image at this moment in time uh, so uh, this is how you should interact with the environment this is how far the object is this is how the far the object is uh, this is how much velocity the object is approaching and uh, this is the depth uh, so cameras don't have depth so we need to understand how to cre recreate depth uh, when we install a camera and then identify uh, the different elements so we talked about i, I think we talked about 
the smart vehicles, uh, electric vehicles. And in that, we talked about cameras, machine vision. But in this case, it has to be something that uh, the humans can interact with. So if they have depth, they know how far or distant the object is. But wouldn't wouldn't two different cameras, you know, artificially yes. create depth? Yes, it can create depth. And because so, the, that's why we have depth, right? Because we have two eyes. We, we have two different. So if, if you just close your eyes like this, I mean, if you put your hands uh, to your uh, one eye. Yeah. Because then you it, don't have depth you just have yeah. one vision and then the brain merges the two images to give you one single image yeah absolutely. because you have two different yeah, images it's, it's, it's very uh, there is an interesting well i don't know if it's interesting but fun uh, experiment if you want to put a thread into a needle with just one eye you just would not be able to and you'll see that you're quite far away with two of your fingers because there is no reference point when you're trying to put one thread into the little hole in the needle yes you need two eyes to see the depth of both of these objects to make yeah. sure that they are aligned otherwise so, it's yeah. very difficult and uh, i mean and and then there are people who can't uh, speak so like stephen hawking uh, he was paralyzed he could not speak so he had uh, machines he could just point his eyes at uh, some text and based on that uh, he could generate text and that text was converted into audio so that's how he was able to talk to a lot of people using just his eyes so that's again technology from a bio biotech point of view so i mean there are so many other things uh, where we are now making nanobots to go inside our body to repair cells so if something is damaged uh, we want to go inside uh, repair it and then maybe stay there or come out. So yeah, yeah. there are so many interesting things. When yeah, I, I, I think recently I've uh, I've seen another article or a, like a, a video where there are like nanobots which actually attaches to human sperm and then pushes it to to go to the to the ovary and uh, make a pregnancy Maybe. happen. So so <laughs> assisted pregnancy to to a whole new level. And, I mean, uh, I mean, even even uh, I mean, if you talk about IVF, uh, that's <laughs> uh, kind of like uh, pregnancy at a whole new level. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and uh, tomorrow you might not need even uh, men; you just need sperm or stem cells. Stem cells. <laughs> Yeah. create a baby <laughs> I, I i think i have heard that well you know it it would be apparently a really bad idea to create two types of stem cell you know from your own stem cells if you create, create a clone a sperm, basically create a clone or sperm, something well it wouldn't be clone if, if you create a sperm and the egg from your own stem cells it's not going to be a clone of yourself yeah, yeah of course um, yeah it it's something dangerous <laughs> you don't know but yeah <laughs> So I think I think cloning is another area uh, where yes. the biotech is involved. So yeah, there is uh, a lot of uh, other things uh, you want to. Um, there are uh, I mean we talked about implants, right? But there are uh, and we talked about uh, biological implants like the organ implants, and then we talked about uh, non-biological implants like a rod in your body, <coughs> etc. Maybe a stent stent in your heart, etc. So those are also uh, bioengineered, and there's a lot of research going on on how to make it more, uh, I mean, uh, more elastic maybe, uh, and more acceptable by the human body without creating a lot of issues so i think that's uh, that's very important so there's yeah there's a lot of research going on and i know a couple of people in working in that industry so this is this one one kind of uh, concept that i want to touch upon um is is that you know all the technology that we talk about in all the episodes you know we we do come across you know good ways of using those and yeah, yeah. actually bad ways so these are all vehicles and whether whoever is driving that is kind of deciding whether it's going to be used in a you know positive way that's beneficial to humankind you know ethically right or or negative way where you know someone's trying to just gain their own personal agenda now um while all technologies have this aspect you know any technology and this is this is what a lot of the time scares me that if you if you are brainy or if you if you study a lot uh, in one particular topic you would be an expert on that topic very quickly and then if you're not ethically if you're not an ethical person you could become a very dangerous person yeah, to the world very yes easily. and uh, it, it's not even too difficult nowadays all the information are available 
and yes. you just need to say if if any one person is kind of devoted uh in one subject, they could become very dangerous very quickly. And what uh, one of the, the reason I bring it bring this up in this episode especially is because it's particularly dangerous in anything to do with biotech because it's directly related to us humans and how we survive in our body. I mean, our consciousness needs our body to kind of stay alive. And um, Anything so you, you know, the, the, I mean, you 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 touched upon a very important point, saying yes, uh, uh, ethically yes, and it has a uh, lot of implications, and uh, we have to be very careful because it involves our bodies. Um, but the way technology is progressing, and then we've talked about, I think, artificial intelligence in one of our previous talks, and Elon Musk said very um, um, very insightful words, and he said that AI is going to surpass human intelligence one way or the other. That's it's just a question not, of when, right? Not, I mean, I wouldn't say that's too insightful. I would, I would, I would predict that. Anyway. No, but, but, but no, that's not the insightful bit. That's, that's the, okay. that's right, the right. first part. Right. The second okay. part is that if we want to uh, be part of that civilization where AI has already surpassed human intelligence, we have to figure out a way to merge with that intelligence, and Neuralink comes there. Ah, right. Okay. So how do you merge with artificial intelligence? How do you merge human intelligence with artificial intelligence? So you, as you mentioned, if you have everything in a chip in our brain, then we don't have to learn. We just have to apply and mm. we have to think creatively, right? So all the foundation is there. Now imagine <clears throat> the, the, the power of artificial intelligence at your fingertips in your brain, and you are actually talking to that intelligence. So he, he's saying that, okay, that part we are not going to beat and it's going to surpass. But what we can do is we can merge with that technology or we can figure out a way to live with that technology, either through implants, either through uh, whatever means, but how do you, or you, th there, is a, there is a concept called cyborgs, part man, part machine. The moment you have a implant, you are basically part machine. Mm -hmm. So you're effectively a cyborg. But what if you can actually interact with that artificial intelligence? I think that's a game changer and that's what that's where the Neuralink direction is but for now it will be just focused on uh, people who are paralyzed but that's the aim the aim is to merge human intelligence with artificial intelligence merge all this and make it one single consciousness than having two different consciousness right now we have actually several consciousness and we have another consciousness which is the internet so you have the internet and then you have human beings and human beings have their own consciousness and they are not merged together what if after we have a chip the consciousness merges and then we also have the artificial intelligence and that consciousness also we can interact with that's the like the <laughs> <laughs> as the that's ultimate, the god level uh, god level of godlike <laughs> powers but i think that's that's where the future is headed i mean we have seen it in a lot lot of science fiction films we have seen it in matrix that we are trying to interact with the machines the mm -hmm. machines are far more intelligent and superior human beings can interact they can plug it in they can become codes etc so how, how do you uh, interact in a world and uh, how do you live amicably and those questions have uh, have been answered uh, some way or the other through a lot of science fiction films and in it's a up to us. speculative way speculative yeah. way exactly so we are not sure how the world will turn out to be but th the way the technology is heading i think we are all headed in that direction so it's uh, just up to us how we um, i mean make it ethical how we regulate it how we make sure that people are not harmed i mean there is something called as biohacking not sure if you have heard of that word, but basically, how do you enhance your fitness or how do you enhance yourself? So how do you hack your body to make it more efficient, to make it more productive, to make it uh, less tired, etc. So there are lot, there is this whole thing called biohacking where you take a uh, certain number of medicines every day so that you get all the nutrients in your body uh, and then you program yourself, you program your mind to uh, just uh, live with a few hours of sleep, etc. So it's it's very interesting, and we'll share certain links. But those are all the things that are currently doing. It's not just uh, technology that we use on a regular basis, but our own bodies are now getting hacked. That, that's and, uh, uh, that's quite interesting. How do how do I 
<laughs> how do i get this <laughs> I, I I'll, I'll i'll share i'll share some things so yeah there are there are a lot of people who are looking at it and uh, i mean and when we talk about hacking imagine when you have an implant in your body and it's talking over wifi or some kind of elect- some using some electromagnetic waves mm-hmm. it's talking to some other piece of technology what if you could intercept and what if you could block what if you could stop mm. say you have a smart pacemaker in your heart someone sends a virus stops <clears throat> this pacemaker mm. right so anything that's connected to the internet is essentially smart because now it has intelligence you can interact with it it can give you information you can uh, receive information but that means you can send some information to it to stop working and it can block something so that's why i mean you have to be very careful when it comes to technology so rinat raised a very good ethical point saying yes technology is good but we have to be very very careful of what we are doing in our bodies or installing or implanting in our bodies and with technology any you know because biotech is a combination of tech and bio a, 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 a powerful aspect of technology is it's usually very easily scalable so if you come up with a technology that is you know that affects something or some one it can probably potentially very easily make it so scalable so it affects the whole world yes so that's why it's particularly dangerous i feel in biotech to to sort of uh... and and the, i mean we just uh, talked about uh, the technology and the hacking part imagine what do you have bio weapons that's also biotech right yes and some people yes. have this uh, like conspiracy answer. theory that uh, covid is a bio yes. weapon yeah because it has the symptom it it's it gives you flu like symptoms mm-hmm. it uh, gives you pneumonia it gives you fever it gives you loss of smell loss of taste so it has uh, symptoms of va- various different diseases combined into one single thing Yes and imagine imagine how powerful it could be like you know there are you know like presidents of various countries you know they sometimes receive like cute adorable letters from from school children to asking for advice and stuff you know in in shape of that if you send a fatal virus in a inside an envelope and the president opens it in whichever country you know yeah 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 have any anthrax and many other things yeah there was a scare yeah. that anthrax and smallpox that we have eliminated it can resurface mm-hmm. because we are preserving it for future uh, uh, knowledge just to make sure that okay mm-hmm. in case something happens we have the biologic the biology of mm-hmm. that particular disease but yeah there are diseases or weapons being engineered that can just pass through air you breathe and you die and you or you touch you die and uh, there are weapons being developed by countries and it can be very dangerous so that's a uh, unethical use of technology people say it can act as a deterrent like you develop nuclear weapons so that others don't attack you so similarly you d- develop bio weapons so that if in case others attack you uh, others attack you you can hit back but because you have developed something it can be dangerous if it's leaked absolutely and the reason why it may be even more difficult or more dangerous is because we are bio people <laughs> uh, <laughs> biological or, organisms yes we are bio multicellular and we need other organic items to eat to survive yes and so if you you know like when like if if for nuclear uh, you know things you you get like underground shelters and stuff so you 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 know avoid the you know the heat and the explosion etc but if it's true if it's if it's a if if a bio weapon is spread across the country with malicious intention you can't just stop eating and it could just easily spread through food or water or you know or air we need exactly. as well so so that's why it's like extra extra um dangerous and we ought to be uh cautious and cautious. and it can be also targeted based on your dna like it just attacks certain kinds of individuals who have certain types of blood blood types so yes. it can be very specific very personalized <laughs> form of attack uh, just to target one single individual very, or one very. single group of uh, a, a community or ethnicity and uh, i mean we have seen it in movies uh, but i'm i'm sure the the movies also get ideas from somewhere and i'm pretty sure that weapons might be ge- uh, being developed a- as we speak but yeah i mean that's the other side of uh, some <laughs> a, a technology so it's yeah. bioengineering uh, something 
So instead right. of creating a weapon that you have to deploy using a lot of chemicals and fuels and explosives, what if you could just deploy it using <laughs> water, <laughs> drinking water? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, the bleak side of technology aside, let's let's come back to the positive sunshiny side of technology. Um, I mean, biotech is has made our lives a lot easier and it will continue to make our lives a lot you know, enhance you actually uh, mentioned about uh, food, like we need food. So there is now bioengineered food. So yes. the vegan, the vegan meat that you get, I mean, it tastes like meat, but uh, it has got no animal content in it. Mm, I'm, I've been vegan. A lot, a lot, a lot, um, uh, uh, it, it doesn't have a lot of carbon footprint either. Exactly. So, so th there is a lot of food that we are now consuming that's bioengineered. I mean, it's not just plants and fruits. It's like a f they call it fake meat. Um, mm. And there is now something which is called lab grown meat. So instead of uh, taking meat from an animal, you take the cell and then you grow the meat without actually growing the animal. <laughs> so what if uh, that happens? Would you, then there is that ethical question. Okay, you're not consuming any animal, but no animal was killed. So do you want to then consume meat? Mm, um, yes. So yeah, so there is this concept of lab grown meat. Uh, which is now uh, becoming very real. And there are a lot of companies who are ex experimenting my, with this. My question is, would it stop growing once it's cooked or would it keep growing inside my stomach? I, th I think when you talk about growth, it means you have control, right? So yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure if they are growing it, they would have control of uh, growing a meat. And they're not growing an organism. Bear in mind, they're just growing the meat. So suppose there is a meat that's very particular and uh, just a disclaimer for people who are offended by this because they are plant eaters uh, we are just discussing this topic because it's uh, related to biology and there are a lot of meat eaters out in the world and it has uh, and it has a huge impact to our environment so if something like this is actually in if it's made and released to the market it actually saves a lot of animals it helps free up the land that's used to feed the animals and then it reduces the carbon footprint. So that's why we're discussing it. So yeah, so I mean, it, it um, you can create a specific uh, part of the animal body or animal meat and then just grow that. And uh, that's what uh, people are looking at. Companies are experimenting with it. And uh, the way our population is growing, I mean, some people argue that okay i think uh Rinad, we you and me had this discussion last week as well where we were talking outside the podcast that uh the, we we may or may not have enough food but it's actually the politics that uh and mm -hmm. the globalization uh, the that's uh, yeah. causing hunger so i mean and if you if you take that then it means either we need if if there is a lot of hunger then we need a lot of food and if the if there is no hunger and we have enough food then we need a way to figure out how to uh, uh, transport the food or maybe grow our own food at our own uh, localized uh, uh, environment so it could be like uh, we live in a very dry terrain it could be extremely cold or extremely hot but it's a dry and because it's dry it means you cannot grow certain things now what if you could grow your own food inside your house so that's where hydroponics and many other things come into picture where you can actually grow your food and it's not just plants now you can grow your own lab grown meat so what if you could grow your own meat so then in a very dry place where you have access to less water less nutrients what if you could now have a sustainable life and what if you could take all this and then go to mass yes. and then then replicate all that and then provide enough food for yourself I think part of uh, lab grown meat is also the the environment around it that we kind of take for granted a lot of the times. I mean, it, uh, there's an interesting um, thought experience, not thought experience, a reality, just a thought that I, I've come across a few days ago that um, when you when a tree grows into just from the starting point to a massive tree, it doesn't, you know, that that mass is not taken from the soil because then there would be a big hole in the soil. It's carbon. All of it is from the air. Carbon dioxide. Nit nitrogen and, and carbon. Yeah, carbon, yes. Um, but a lot of it is nitrogen as well, as far as I, I mean, I might be remembering a, 
you know, uh, not, not, not. Very... But you're right. I mean, uh, plants act well, as a carbon capture device or a nitrogen capture. It's are also relying on, on air a lot of the time. So Mars lab grown meat, I don't know for sure, but it certainly is a modifiable technology, which can be probably adapted to, to that in the future. Yeah. No, I, yeah, I think, yeah, you raised a good point that yes, you need air because uh, on Earth, most of the carbon is in solid form. And on Venus, most of the carbon is in gaseous form. That's why Venus is one of the hottest planets in the solar system. Um, it has a greenhouse effect because there is so much of carbon in the air. It acts as a very big greenhouse and it just keeps getting more hot because there is no way of the heat escaping. Uh, but on Earth, what happened is the plants, the animals, we are essentially carbon uh, beings. Carbon-based beings. Yeah. Carbon-based uh, organisms. We trap a lot of uh, carbon. So when we die, the carbon goes back to the soil. But if we try to burn a lot of these fossil fuels in a huge amount, then we add the carbon back into a gaseous state and that traps the heat and that causes greenhouse effect. And that's what's happening so, I mean, we started with biotech, but we ended up with global warming. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's related in one way or another. But no, this this has been a really good conversation, really. I've, I've learned a lot. Thanks, Amit, for, for all of these insights and information. Hopefully, the audience also had a good, um, you know, um, good talk and uh, learned and, you know, generally been aware of what could happen. And as, as with any technology, it's, it's always good to know what has been done what hap what's happening right now and what could happen in future so you know it, it i think these knowledges actually affects our lives in, in directly and sometimes you know in many ways indirectly as well but uh, so that, that's why I, I always encourage people to gather more knowledge uh, through potentially the starting point could be our podcast and then you go away and do more research on it and you know let us know what you found even uh, we would be quite happy to get the feedback and anything that you've done with uh, with with you know from getting the knowledge from here etc so yeah um, hopefully you guys have enjoyed it and you guys keep hopefully will keep coming back to our episodes uh, uh, we are looking at getting more guest appearances in our, you know, uh, soon uh, near future episodes. So uh, stay tuned. And uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thanks for tuning in and uh, thanks for listening to us. Uh, we are always excited to host these talks and talk about technology because that's a passion. And we hope you enjoy these as well. So yeah, keep listening, keep subscribing and uh, share your feedback. Thanks a lot. Enjoy.